Good morning. Do you ever wake up, maybe you did this morning, and you feel lousy, and you just don't feel like um, really God loves you, or you feel his presence, and in your mind is all the bad things that are happening to you. You're thinking about what's going on in your marriage, you're thinking about what's going on in your finances. Really, you don't even want to face the day because of perhaps conflict with family or um, something very personal that's going on in your life. And you would say to me, man, if you knew it, if you really knew what was going on with me, you wouldn't believe it. You know, you're not unique by any means. Everybody that I know is generally suffering in some way from something wrong. It's very unusual, particularly for a Christian, because unbelievers, they don't really have a problem. I mean, you know, they don't, I mean, they're just going with the flow. But a Christian, he's going against the world. He's going against the flesh. He's going against the devil. He's going against all this thing. You're definitely going against grain. And you've got God that's sculpturing you and making you and many times using uh, problems and tribulations and trials and all those things. So it's natural to wake up and feel that. But you shouldn't keep that. You should quickly deal with it. Don't let it contaminate your day. Romans chapter 8. He says, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. You don't have a spirit of bondage about it. You're not in prison. You've been liberated by God Almighty with the spirit of the Lord. Is there is liberty. You're free. You're free in Christ and you're going to live forever. You're never going to be separated from God. Never going to be separated from those that know God. That is something to start praising God for. No matter what is going on for the rest of the day, you started with the truth about your identity and your position in Christ. Start there with who you are. Then he goes on to say, But you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Jesus was criticized by the Pharisees. They couldn't believe that he referred to his father in such an intimate way. That he would actually say Abba. Such a word that is, is close, very close to our daddy, Papa. That was so intimate, they thought, it was, they thought it was blasphemous. But Paul is telling us that that's our father. We have a heavenly father that lets us call him in a very, very intimate way when he is surrounded by cherubim and seraphim and, and fire and flame and thunderous vo a voice that sounds like falling water. We wouldn't even be able to imagine what it is to see his throne. But we get to walk up to him and call him Father. Now, <laughs> think about this for just a minute, very quickly. The intimacy that is there. A father is, the, the children favor him. You know, I have seven children, and they'll say, well, you can't deny that one. You can't deny that one, because they look like me. Well, we look like the father in that we're led by the Spirit. There is a similarity there. And not only that, God treats you differently than he does other people. Don't you love your children in a different way than you do children of strangers? Certainly. Do you know what the best part to me is? God can't wait to hear from you what it is. He already knows your heart, but he wants to hear it from your lips. My, one of my children, David, had a speech impediment. He couldn't say his words, so we had to send him to speech school and everything. And when he was about four years old, and we had a dog named Personality. And he called, Boy, now with you. Boy, now with you. And I used to love, I just, I would prompt him just to say, Boy, now with you. Boy, now with you. Boy, boy now with you. Because it was so precious. God wants us to come to him with the personalities of our life. They may be imperfect. We don't even know how to approach him. But they're precious in his sight. And when we come to God, he does not reject us. I can remember one of my sons was overweight. In fact, two of them were. And I can remember it was, it was before I was about to preach. And he came in there and he was crying. And I think something had happened with one of the kids, and they'd rejected him. He says, Dad, am I going to be fat for the rest of my life? 
Is there any hope for me? It broke my heart. You think I would have rejected him? I just hugged on him and loved on him, encouraged him. That's where God is with you today. Whatever is going on with you, let him put his arms around you and love you. And you tell him your heart. God wants to hear it. God bless you. Have a great day.